How to design a boudoir book. So you've got these gorgeous boudoir photos, and if you're a photographer, your client wants to order an album, or maybe you wanna start offering these beautiful albums so that you can make some real money as a photographer. Because when you just deliver digital images, you are saying, I'm okay with these going onto a USB drive to sit in a drawer and dump it, because that's what happens with digitals. But if you are offering real luxury products like photo albums, then your clients get a better service and you can run a more sustainable business. So how do you design one of those? I'm gonna tell you. It's showtime. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer in Silicon Valley, California, and I love selling albums because I found the coolest albums from all over the world, the most beautiful materials to wrap them in, the perfect pages for the right photo paper that show off my work the best way that I've found. And my clients love them because it's a luxury keepsake. You know, I have this incredible experience and then they get to leave with these beautiful products as opposed to just giving a link to a Google Drive where they can go check out their photos, put a couple on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and then the images just go die. Plus the images never look great on somebody's screen compared to how we can deliver them in print. It'd be like going to a really fancy restaurant and you can smell the food and the wait staff is helping you find the perfect wine and you've made the right menu selections and then everything is just thrown on a plate in a doggy bag or, and then you get a doggy bag to take it home to go. You're like, well, this was a really great experience until now I just have to take everything home like ugly thrown in a bag. That's not how we want to treat our clients. So I'm gonna show you how I design my photo albums. There are a ton of different softwares out there. I'm gonna use my favorite and show you how easy it is. So this is where I start right here. The program is called Smart Albums and I'll put a link down, down in the description below. So when you install the program, it'll give you a little open window that'll ask, do you wanna open a current product? Do you want to create a new project? something like that. It'll give you a list of all your past projects. I skipped that screen because it has my client's names on it and I don't wanna share those publicly. But as soon as you click new album, this is the screen it gives you. So you start out by choosing whatever company makes your albums. And you can see they have a ton of companies on here. So one of my go-tos, let's find it. Uh, Floracolor USA. I already had it open. Then you choose, do you want it to be square, rectangular or uh, horizontal here, or vertical this way, you know, landscape or portrait. I do all of my albums square and a 10 by 10. And then it'll ask you what kind of photo paper you want. They only have one option for these and it's thick paper. But there are other ones, I think Bay Photo might have the different options. So we'll do Bay Photo. Yeah, you can see here, a Pacific album, different paper types. And the reason they have them like this is because there's different thicknesses on the pages, different dimensions that they need to stick with, different image resolutions. So you just choose the album type that is offered and this program has all the specs built into it. So let's head back to Flora Color USA here. And if you want to know more about what albums I sell, I've got another killer video on this channel about how to display boudoir products. All right, we're going to do that. Mine, again, are all 10 by 10. And it'll only give you the options that the company has available. So you can't choose options here that aren't available in that company's ordering software, which is handy so you don't accidentally design something that you can't even order. All right, then we hit next. Then you get this screen. You have two options, all templates, which you can see here, samples of different kinds of things that you can do, or templates with only the three to two frame ratio. That's what I do, because I don't wanna crop my photos in the albums. Uh, that's really important to me. I want them to stay the same shape. All of my wall art, everything that I do uh, is a three to two ratio, so I don't have to crop my photos. You can't get an eight by 10 for me. You can't get an 11 by 14, no 16 by 20s, none of that. I want everything to be three two so I don't have to crop it. If you are okay cropping your photos, that's totally cool. Uh, you can choose that other option. Then choose the background color. 
I do all of my work black with a one pixel gray border around all of my photos. That's how I do all of my albums. You might prefer to have it be a white background with no border or a white background here. You know, you can choose, you know, the color wheel and do all kinds of things. Maybe you want a green background or a red background. I keep everything black. And same thing with the borders. You can just choose the sizes there. You can enter your own. And then the gap between the images. So if you have a setup like this, you can have the images spaced out farther or you can have them closer together. I usually keep it on thin. All right, then we hit start. It's gonna ask you to name things. We'll just call this new project. All right, so here is the screen that we're gonna start with. This top window is where all of our layouts are going to be, and down here are where the photos go. So you can either click Import Images, or you can just grab them from your Finder window on a Mac, or, you know, I forget what it's called on a PC, but you can just drag and drop the photos down here. It will upload. Very, very quickly. These are basically smart previews down here. And what's cool about this is you design the album and then I can save this design file. Now, if I go into my finder and I delete these images because say I just don't wanna keep full resolution images living on my computer forever, that takes up a lot of space once you've been doing this a while, then when you open the finder or you open this window back up again to continue designing, none of these images will be available. It's like if you're in Lightroom and the raw files are suddenly moved to a new folder, it will ask you to relocate them so that it can, you know, you can continue working with these images. So let me just show you an example of what that looks like. So if I were to go here, say delete these two images, now they're no longer available. They're still showing down here so I can put them into my design. But now when I go to export, ignore that, because I'm gonna have more than one page. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain what this is once we get to that point, but I just wanna show you what happens if you delete these images. If I try to export this design, it'll tell me it can't find these images because they don't exist anymore. And these are only smart previews down below, and I need to have the full resolution images available so that it can render these full resolution spreads. So I can just go into Lightroom, re-export my full resolution images, and now they're going to be available for exporting. So you don't have to keep all of the large files living on your computer all the time. You can just re-export them later as full resolution images, and you can redo your designs here. But once I've ordered an album, I usually don't go back and change my layouts anyway, but just so you know how this works. All right, and then another cool thing about this, it grays out the ones you have already used. So you don't accidentally use the same image twice. You still can add the image again. It will let you add it twice, but because it's grayed out, you know better. All right, then let's get to here. So this, being upscaled to 212%. That's because these are not full resolution images that I have in this folder. These are just low resolution ones. So this is a great warning if your images aren't large enough for you to actually print at this resolution. So again, this software has everything that you're going to need. But here, let's say I wanna make it full screen. So you can click that little icon there, and it will give you examples of all the different layouts that you can do based on your designs. And you'll notice it keeps moving around resizing, but it's always a black background with that gray border because that's what I've set for my album. And I can choose any of these things that I want. Maybe I only want it on one side. Maybe I want it to take up two thirds. And the reason I might do this is because of where the gutter is in the middle. If I don't like where that line is on her body, I can move the image one way or the other. I don't like this because now her head is facing the very edge of the frame and it feels crowded. But if I move her over this way, I don't know that I want the gutter of the page cropped through her back. And notice I can click the arrows here and just start moving through. 
but I prefer to just bring this up and do it this way. Now the image over here you can see is cropped. So I can drag the image up and down to get it exactly where I want it. Maybe I don't want her right in the middle. Maybe I wanna move this down a little bit. And you can do some other adjustments here as well if you want, but that's generally all I do is adjust things like that. All right, now if we're gonna do multiple images per spread, let's grab these two. It will automatically put them in and then you can adjust from there. So again, if you mouse over this, you can see this option on the left side. This will let you just mirror it, flip the images around. Or you can click the four windows here and you can see different layouts. So rearrange timeline or match timeline order. Basically, when you match the timeline order, it's going to keep them in the same order they are down here. But if you go to rearrange, it will flip the images around. So you have options. And again, when I put these together, I'm looking where the gutter of the page is. It's kind of weird cropped through her wrist right there. But if I go here, I don't want this one looking off to the edge of the frame. I just don't like that layout, nor do I want her leg to be right here. So I'm gonna flop them back around and I'm gonna choose this layout. So now she's facing the inside of the, the page. She's facing the inside of the page. Nothing is cut off. Nothing has a line going through it. I'm happy with that. Then I can just go to the next one, you know, and maybe I just want one photo on here again, but it, maybe I don't want this to go right through her face. So then I can just keep that and go on to the next one. What's cool about it is if you add in multiple images, it will give you different layouts like this film strip. And then when you go up here, it will give you different options based on the number of images that you've added in, which is pretty cool. And you can see here as I add one more image in, it will constantly update. And then if I delete them, it'll now allow me to choose these different layouts. So it's so easy to use. That's why I love this software. I can design an album in just a few minutes. Then you're looking at these and you're like, oh man, well, I'd really like this to be the first page and not this one. Rather than deleting the images and starting over, you could go to your pages down here and just drag them and rearrange the order. Super helpful. Because I usually do one full page spread and then I do two pages of multiple images and then another full page and then multiples. So if I realize I've done you know two full spreads in a row, and not enough multiples, I can drag things around, do them however I want. You can change your color profiles to whatever they need to be. If you're working in the metric system or you want them in, in pixels, totally up to you also. And it tells you max number of pages is 80 and the minimum number is 12. And that is for Flora Colors settings. I need at least 12 spreads to make one of these albums. Let's just throw a few more images in here. Again, very, very easy to use. And then if I were to grab and go auto build, I wanna do one spread. Nope, I wanna do, you know what? Let's start all over. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you auto build the entire thing. You can just select all the pages and delete them. Now I'm gonna come down here select all of the images, auto build. Seven spreads, one to eight images per spread. Well, I know I have 27 images. I don't want more than maybe two to three images per spread. So I'm going to adjust this. So this is no higher than three. There we go. You can do smart grouping or you can specify a range, blocks of time, black and white. So maybe you want all the black and whites together or you want them in chronological order, totally up to you. Template reuse, this is how often you will use the same template. I'm just gonna leave it on medium for the sake of doing this. Then we go to auto build, give it a second and it's gonna go through and add the images in Obviously I wouldn't do this because I don't want blank images or blank pages over here in the book with a vertical image. Nor would I put these two very similar images side by side like that. 
but you can just see like, you know, maybe these would go together. That's kind of cool. So I rarely ever use the auto build feature. I would rather just do this on my own. So again, I can come down here if I don't like these, I can select all of them, delete them just by hitting the delete key. And then I can go build my own spreads here. All right, so I'm gonna go through, just add in a bunch of these. So we have at least 12 spreads. And it shows you here how many you currently have. Six spreads, 12 pages. Because each, as you can see the line down the middle, each spread is two pages. And I wanna just go till I get to 12 here. One more. I love this photo. All right. So now I have 12 spreads. This is the minimum I need to do that book. So I'm gonna to go to export. And it's telling me, it's reminding me, I have four spreads that contain upscaled images. So I know that they're not high enough resolution to print. This is a great safety in case you caught the little warning label on the side. I'm gonna ignore that for the sake of this. And then you can, we wanna export for print. JPEG or PDF. So it really depends, you know, in design, whatever you need, your lab will specify, usually gonna be JPEG. Now you can do all spreads or a range. Maybe you've already designed this album, but you wanted to reconfigure two pages. So I can just, you know, maybe two and five will be exported, but I'm gonna go ahead and do all of them. You can export as single pages, meaning instead of having 12 spreads, you're gonna have 24 unique pages, but that's just not how the ordering software works. And it gives you all the dimensions here, 254 DPI, the color profile that is all specified by Floracolor for their 10 by 10 albums. You can also do cloud proofing or export for proofing, which will you know allow you to throw these into an online gallery essentially for your clients to view there. Maybe you're doing a wedding design album and you wanna confirm with them first, it will allow you to export essentially lower resolution images without the trim areas so that they can see what their album is going to look like. I do not allow my clients to choose the images or to choose the layouts. I take care of all that. That's part of the full service offering I do. If you wanna confirm your layouts with your clients first, you can export for proofing and then go back and export full resolution later on. Then you can click here where it says choose, choose the location where you want them to go and hit export. It's super fast and that's it. Now I can go to that area and you can see it's got all of my spreads right here. Super easy. And that is how I design my boudoir books. And when I'm ready for the next one, I just go back to create new project, pick the next kind of album, make magic happen. And you're gonna get to do this so fast once you've practiced a few times. And again, there are other software programs out there that do this sort of thing. I just really like this one. So again, it's called Smart Albums. So if you wanna know more about selling products, designing albums, how to price yourself, I have other great videos on this channel or head over to boudoirguild.com. That link is down below and I will walk you through step-by-step step exactly how to choose the right products, how to sell them, what to charge. I demystify all of that and walk you step-by-step step through how to do it. This is the same way I generate multiple six figures of revenue in my own studio and you can copy what I do and start making the same kind of money. It's not as difficult as most people make it out to be. So if you have any other questions, post them in the comments down below or shoot me an email, mike at boudoirguild.com. I'm happy to help however I can. You are amazing. We'll see you inside. Thank you